Welcome to Chariot Club. The first rule of Chariot Club is what we're gonna be talking about today in this video. So with that said, I wanted to start off with just a brief overview of your general generic chariot right here. We're, use, we're looking at Orc Boar Chariots, which you can see from their stat line what their unique value proposition is in the context of a general battlefield. So we'll first kind of just, just talk about their role. And as you can see, they are actually okay armored uh, at 80, relatively high actually. Leadership decent, speed certainly above average, Average. melee attack low melee defense also low uh, and charge bonus as you can see right here charge bonus is very high at, at an 80 that is certainly near the upper end so we can see very easily now that the value of the chariot is to basically charge basically to charge into the enemy and how do we keep charging into the enemy well using our speed by keeping moving and actually you know having above average speed right speed right there pretty damn good but what stands out also as far as the negatives go with these with these chariots is that their melee attack and melee defense is very very low relatively speaking they are not going to trade all that well even with tier one frontline units so that means that ideally we want to maximize their value by charging them into the enemy lines and then getting them out. Now, I'm not saying anything new here, so I want to now demonstrate a little bit of what this should look like in the actual battlefield. So, I'll see you in the battle. All right, so here we are in the battlefield, and my chariot is approaching the enemy, and you know what? I'm just going to throw him, throw caution to the wind and stick him right on this frontline unit right here, this men at arms with shields, a relatively low tier unit, and let's just see how he does, literally charging them right in the front as they're bracing. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. But let's let them stick around in melee here for a second. And as you can see, on the charge, they got a D they got five kills, which is pretty good. But now that they're stuck in melee, are they really racking up the kills? Well, no. In fact, they're actually taking quite a quite a fair bit of damage. So as you can see, even vers versus very low tier units, this is not the way that we really want to be using our chariots. We want to keep them moving. We want to get them out of there if they can, which I think that they'll be able to push on through. By the way, you might you might find that uh, aggressively clicking your mouse is going to help with that, <laughs> and, and we can actually get them back uh, out of harm's way into safety. So yes, when it comes down to rule number one, keep them moving, and it is okay to actually charge into the front line of your enemy. You want to make a couple considerations with that, though. Though. Your first major consideration should be, are you armor piercing or not? And are you going against armored targets or not? If they are low armor and you are not armored piercing, you can charge them right in the face. And it's actually okay. Now, you do want to usually avoid stationary targets. Um, however, as you just saw with that little demonstration, it can still be effective if you keep them moving. But if you are armored piercing, you can throw a little bit more caution to the wind and charge into those armored targets. But again, as you saw, and as we go into rule number two of Chariot School, no, Chariot Club, Chariot Club, that's it, Chariot Club, uh, we want to make sure that we do not let them stay there in melee, because now we're just not extracting the value out of them that they really should be having. And as you can see, once again, we can actually charge them one more time. We, sh we might even be able to kill or break this unit with one more charge. And this is a frontal charge. So there's so once we go through these these first initial rules i want to go through their ideal targets as well but again when we leave them in melee we are not extracting the value out of them that is rule number two remember their melee defense is not very high and their melee attack is, is not even that high either so their charge is their main value and in order to maximize their value we need to make sure that they keep on moving keep on charging into those targets uh, ideally targets that match up well with their own traits as we can see right here Pretty much all chariots are going to have some sort of anti-infantry trait. That's essentially what they are going to be good for. But now we should get into exactly who they should ideally be targeting. And that perfectly li lines us up for, for rule number three of chariot school. No, chariot club. I keep on saying it. Chariot club. Rule number three, chariot club. And that is who do we want to ideally ta target? back lines and flanks and as you can see right now we are in the back line and these archers are about to get a lovely surprise in the back end as uh, as my chariots approach and as you can see right here getting them both in the uh, getting both into the back line and actually even you know getting a back charge here is going to be extra good as always back charges do a little bit more damage as it's going to ignore more and more stat lines defensive stat lines of the enemy and as you can see right there immediately 
Oh, immediately, we're actually almost gonna, we're gonna cause them to waver and maybe even, uh, maybe even break here. Uh, now again, even if I do leave them into melee with very, 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 very low tier units, I mean, these are peasant bowmans, they can handle a little bit of their own, but it's just not ideal. We could have done either one, uh, we could have done two charges or we could have done that and had about the same results. But when we leave them stationary, that means that they are going to potentially be in harm's way. They're gonna potentially they're gonna potentially be in risk. And seeing as the chariots do have decent amount of speed, at least enough to out to outrun these guys over here, we can, you know, use them on multiple different fronts. And I'll just have them run these guys down right in over here as well. So again, that is the three rules of chariot club. To summarize, rule number one, keep them moving. Rule number two. Do not engage in melee. Rule number three, ideally, we want to target the back lines, the back sides of the back lines or the flanks of the enemy. That is where they're really going to maximize their value alongside the other two rules of Chariot Club. And as you can see right here, we'll just finish this one off as we go in and maybe even get a nice little charge into the back side of these guys right here to finish these babies off in the way that they should be finished off. Maybe we actually go after these guys right here and demonstrate that chariots are actually incredibly powerful when you do use them in that way. Now, I will say one more thing. This is a little bit of a bonus. It's not necessarily a, a rule of chariot club, but I do strongly suggest avoiding missile chariots. I don't really understand what their deal is, but I've never really found much of a use for missile chariots. Um, you know, it's, it's I've just found it better that if I want to use a chariot, go with the regular chariots they're gonna have usually a little more me melee defense or melee attack which means that they're gonna be a little bit more serviceable the the ranged attack the missile attack for a chariot unit is usually very underwhelming and not going to be the best way to kind of maximize or extract the value out of that it's kind of cool to see on the battlefield yes there are some serviceable ones absolutely i think in the dark elves rosters especially um but for the most part if you want to bring a chariot understand the role of a chariot essentially to disrupt the enemy formations and also be an absolute nuisance that's very difficult to stop and that means that well realistically we don't really have a use for missiles there um of course there's one more consideration that i actually forgot to mention or actually i briefly mentioned it but i want to i want to retarget it once again and that is if you are going to charge into the front line of an enemy make sure that they are ideally th spread thin because the more th the more thin that they are spread the less entity mass that they have and the less entity mass that they have the more likely you can just charge right on through them keep yourself moving and then you get more charges and again what's your biggest what's your biggest threat as a chariot your charges your charges that is your or your biggest value as a, as, as a chariot that is your charges so with that said i now want to welcome you to chariot club use this information wisely treat, treat your chariots well and they will treat you well and i'll see you in the next one take care